class. Today we're uh, talking a little bit about um, module one in week one. And we're going to be um, looking today at a definition of communication. It follows pretty carefully, going off a little bit on some tangents, um, about uh, chapter one of your text. So if you've had that read or you want to follow along, it's not exactly, but I'll be adding on to that. So the first thing um, I would like to talk about is uh, the, the word communication, if it's broken down to its most common denominator, it means common. It comes from the Latin word um, for having something in common. So in all your communication interactions, um, you want to find some commonality with that person with whom you're communicating, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether it's a group or whether it's mass comm to, in fact, the entire, entire world. So it's finding something in common, and that is from the Latin root. Another thing that you need to know about the word communication, it's very hard to do. <laughs> um, we're always failing at this, so it's easy to say we really can communicate, but it's very hard to do. And so um, you always want to have concern for your audience and getting the idea in their head as to what we see in our own mind to get them to understand your thoughts. We might say, oh, we have a failure to communicate, it's like, mm-hmm, we've all been there too many times, probably. So one of the other words about communication is that the goal of it is understanding. How do we find something in common so that we can have an understanding from the person speaking and the person receiving the message? How do we, how do we establish that? It's very difficult in our world, world, world today with diversity and different cultures and ethnicities between genders. So as you can see, it's not as easy. If we only could just understand each other, wouldn't that be nice? Those are really nice words, but it's almost impossible to do. And so we, um, we look at this meaning. Another thing about communication is that it's an interaction. There are some fields of study at MSUM and other schools who study communication, and indeed people write their doctoral dissertations on some of these fields, where people study the interactions of others. We are a little different from psychology, which is the science of the brain, and certainly how other people react, but this is studying about people and how people interact uh, with each other. It pulls in anthropology, sociology, psychology, um, sometimes um, mass communication, journalism, it pulls all of those things into a very interesting and broad field. So your parents, if you're majoring in this, will ask you, what in the world do you hope to do with that? Well, just about anything. <laughs> you'll, be very, you'll be very equipped to walk into this world. So let's talk about, talk about for a minute areas of interaction um, that we have. The first area would be intra-communication, which is very interesting. Those are the messages we give ourselves. Yes, you hear voices. <laughs> Your message isn't always positive either. So it's how we interact with those um, self voices and how we operate in this world as individuals. And we don't study that too much in this particular course. Um, another uh, area is interpersonal. That's between two people. It's between me as the speaker, my camera person, and between you as the audience. So it's interpersonal. We're having one on one here. It can be with a parent, a significant other, a professor with your doctor. So it's, it's this kind of thing. And really, this is the most popular fields to study because people want to know, how do we make this better? How do I ask for forgiveness from this person? And how, why did I say that to that person? I didn't mean it. That kind of thing. So it's a very um, valuable um, uh, research area to study and a very popular one in our field. Um, then if you move up from interpersonal, you have small group. Um, I believe it's defined, it could be from 7 to 15. I think 15 is kind of big for a small group, but, but um, a small group really runs the world. You get things done. Uh, you've probably been in group projects, and there's always someone who doesn't do their work, but that's another story. Um, small group, this is where leadership will develop. This is where you learn to follow. This is where you learn to take orders in the workplace. How does the small group work? Microsoft works in teams. Um, Amazon works in teams. Practically every workplace, you will be working in a team. So this is also very valuable in all those group projects. You're in business or communication studies, whatever. 
that's how you're going to be working together. It's not always easy, okay, to make everybody on the same place at the same time. The next level up is organizational communication. If you've been to Sanford Hospital, it's a giant machine, and they have many staff people who are working on how do we communicate to the nurses, the doctors, the patients, the staff. MSUM has to communicate, otherwise you'd never be able to find your major. We try to make it easy for you and it still gets messed up. Who do I talk to if I want to change my major? What do I have to do? How do I um, change my major? How do I do this? How do I do that? So um, every organization, Delta Airlines, whatever it might be, communicates with each other and it's very difficult when it's large. This is where you get into organizations in crisis. You see this happening all the time. It's a scandal, it's a, a maybe food poisoning, something happens where people there have to say, okay, this is public relations, we have to say, how do we take our reputation and bring it out of this? So organizational communication is very important. If you like the corporate world or nonprofit, nonprofit, you can do it all. Then you'll be highly trained, but you'll probably be out the door quicker because it's, uh, it's really hard when you have to do all of those elements. And finally, mass communication, where we're literally, our journalists that are trained here and at other schools are speaking to the masses, um, to our viewing audience, or literally to places in the world, all right, to say what is, what is happening here. And now we get into all these issues of is the news the truth or what these people are reporting. So it's really getting a little hairy in that field as to how um, to interpret mass comm to a very diverse and sometimes mean-spirited audience. So that's some place we have to we have to work on that. So those are the ways and the classes we teach that talk about communication as interaction. Okay, so I hope that's plain to you. It's not really listed in our book, but it's a really cool major. Most of you are in your majors, so I'm not recruiting necessarily. It's also a good minor to have, and we have a leadership minor as well. So, um, Also, I should have said too, part of that small group organizational is how to handle conflict. Oh, that's a big deal, and working with people in other cultures as well. So, And we also have here sports communication and event planning, which is really group-driven. Um, and organizationally driven. So lots of neat courses that you can, you can take. But it is also, um, we have, it's a process. And the process we use is a very, um, was developed a long time ago. But communication itself is a young field. It began as rhetoric with Aristotle, beginning, middle, end. That's how you organize. You've been doing that since fourth grade when you wrote your little essays. So that is very old, but that came from the Greek um, theory of education. Um, the way we teach our public speaking um, is actually interesting. Organization is from Aristotle and the Greeks. It's from 4-H, everyone. The speaking model that we have uses what you might use if you've demonstrated or shown your cap or you're showing a piece of clothing or your flower arrangement. It comes out of 4-H, everyone, and that's the model that we teach. It's different from TEDx is very good, but that's a whole other model of how they want you to speak. So when you hear that, it won't sound quite like ours, but that's the way we do it across the United States practically and how we will organize. And at the basis is this model that came about in the early teachings of communication studies, um, which is not that old, probably the 50s. It hasn't been going on like math or something like that. But the model looks like this, and I'm going to go through the whole thing as we finish this module and then we'll focus our next uh, module on the sender and then the topic as we use the model for our frame. So the sender is the sender of the message. You as public speakers, this will be you prepping and giving your speech. All right, if it's with mom, you're the sender, mom's the receiver, so you can put any communication context in here that you want. This is what's happening, okay? But we're going to talk about it in the context of public speaking. So you are the sender of the message or the S person, all right? And we're going to talk about that in the next module about how you can be really strong and credible at that. The thing that you'll be working with is what am I going to talk about? What's important to me? What's important to my audience? And you start to think about some topics that might be interesting. Sometimes you'll be asked to speak um, at an organization and they'll say, 
We want you to speak on following your passion. How do you find your passion in life? These students need to be motivated. You're speaking to them. So sometimes you're, if you're asked to speak, you will be given a topic. But sometimes, as this class, you have to come up with your own topic. What you are going to do once you have a topic, and we'll talk a bit about research a little bit later, but you take what you have. There's no meaning in words. You make meaning. You put them together so it makes sense. That's called encoding. So you're putting the words together that you think, this is how the audience will understand. So if I'm doing a training session for new Americans who have limited language, it's going to be pretty darn simple. But if I'm doing it for people who have a PhD, I will encode it in their language of jargon, for example. So you will encode until you start to form a message. And this is its as if you're a potter and you have a piece of clay and it looks like nothing but a blob. And you start to craft and shape it with some organization and crafting your message so it starts to be a living thing. Oh, it's not a blob of clay, it's a vase. And it's useful. It's the same thing. It's very frustrating right here. I'm here now with <clears throat> some of, excuse me, some of my research. It's like driving me crazy. I can't stand to be here where I'm starting to craft it and think, where do I start? How do I do this? So we give you an outline to follow, a formula. If you follow that, you're not off everywhere trying to figure out how to do it. So that's part of your assignments. Um, once you have your message crafted, now this is interesting because it's online. So we're using all sorts of channels or mediums to pass this through. I'm working on a camera here with Sarah doing the taping and that's a whole nother channel. I can't see anybody but her and this room. So I don't see you, okay, at the moment. So 